Hey, hello and welcome to Military and Aerospace Electronics Tech Summit, Quick Chat with Pentech Inc. in Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Uh, I'm John Keller, Chief Editor of Military and Aerospace Electronics. Today's presenter is Roger Hosking, Vice President and Co-Founder of Pentech. Um, so let's go right into it. Um, we're going to be talking. Uh, we're going to be talking about SOSA, which is the uh, Open Group's Sensor Open Systems Architecture. Uh, Roger, we're going to be talking about SOSA and what it means to the warfighter. So, with the mandate in advancing open systems architectures and development of of SOSA, where are we today, and what role is SOSA playing as you see it, Roger? Well, we'd, we have had a long uh, time since the original government mandate for open systems architecture to drive procurement and system architectures going forward. Each of the three services developed their own um, ideas of how that open system architecture should be uh, implemented for their own particular needs. And uh, about four, four years or so ago, they decided that, gee, we're all kind of gravitating towards the same good things to get our job done, maybe we should combine forces and, um, you know, have a more efficient and effective and a more unified open system architecture specification that we'll all work to. And then we can do some more sharing of different platforms, different hardware, different software architectures among the three services and make it much more efficient, not only for us, for each of our individual organizations, but also for the government, and then of course, ultimately for the warfighters. I mean, that's that's the whole idea. So that was the uh, initiative for starting SOSA, the Sensor Open System Architecture, which is managed and run by the Open Group, and uh, that is now uh, proceeded through the, the last several years to refining the principles and the specs and the architecture of of what SOSA envisions for these new. OSA, Open System Architecture Platforms, to the point where we are a few, uh, maybe a month or, or a little bit longer uh, away from having the first issue of the technical standard issued by SOSA that will then become a, uh, a document to, to which uh, procurement requirements can be, can be specified and to which um, vendors and manufacturers in the industry can build products have them uh, certified and go forward from there. So it's, it's very exciting. A lot of work has been done. The, the industry, the uh, armed force, forces, uh, DOD, uh, academia have all kind of joined forces together behind this. And so there's, there's quite a large community of people contributing to the SOSA effort. And uh, it's now coming to fruition in, the, in this standard that's about to be released. Well, Roger, when when it's actually released in a month or so, I mean, what's really going to change by then? Is is uh, will the embedded computing community will they be doing anything different from what they're doing now? Uh, will we be able to say things are SOSA certified instead of SOSA aligned? What's really going to be the turning point when the uh, when the actual standard is released? What will happen is that that today, as, as, as we're uh, moving towards this goal, we, we, each of us vendors can claim to be SOSA aligned, but we can't claim to be SOSA certified. And so, as you said, once the standard is released, there will be a procedure for obtaining the certification, the certification testing, which will be done by third party companies that will make sure that the products that are proposed uh, by vendors for uh, conformance certification really do meet all of the requirements that are listed for that particular class of, of uh, products that are defined within the SOSA standard itself. So that will definitely change. And then how will that affect everyone? As what we'll see coming from the government is more uh, contracts being issued for SOSA conformance. And in, in that way, vendors will be able to bid on those contracts. And the ones that have the most SOSA content are likely to be the winners of those contracts, of those bids, uh, their bids will win. So it, this is how it will change uh, the business aspect going forward for the embedded community. And 
and you know it's it's got a it's got a pretty good runway and it's it's about ready to take off i think okay well what are some of the existing standards uh that sosa uh accommodates and takes advantage of and how how will that work well for the hardware it's largely dominated by Vita standards for open VPX and, and other Vita standards that are related to open VPX, uh, which include, by the way, the Vita 49.2, which is the transport uh, radio protocol for pro protocol definition of, of, of packetizing digital RF signals. Of course, a lot of the uh, Vita uh, chassis cooling, airflow through, uh, conduction cooled, and, and different types of thermal management. Those are embodied and those will be adopted. There's also a Vita 46.11, which is a chassis uh, management or a platform management um, specification for managing the resources within a particular system, a card cage uh, full of boards so that there will be health monitoring, there'll, there'll be status monitoring, there, there'll be other, um, you know, integrity checks to make sure that all the boards are behaving uh, as they should and are present in the system. So those are some of the things that that are related to open VPX that will come from Vita. But there are other standards, uh, such as Red Hawk, which is, a, you know, a software uh, platform that's been widely adopted by, again, all of the three services. Uh, there's the, a lot of the FACE standards are being adopted um, and other predecessor standards like Victory and uh, CMOS and Mora. The, these, each, each of these different other standards, parts of, of, of them are being adopted within SOSA. And the, the ones that are being adopted are the ones that have prov proven worthy enough to be uh, a part of the SOSA collection of standards because they satisfy particular needs that have been defined in the SOSA uh, mission and, and initiatives. Well, Roger, when you look at some of the some of the standards, uh, previous standards that SOSA is adopting, has you know I realize that SOSA is concerned about simplicity. It's concerned about not having a proliferation of standards. In that move towards simplicity and keeping uh, the number of standards uh, to a manageable level, has there been anything lost uh, technologically, do you think? I th it is a trade-off. Uh, previously, because there were so many open VPX, um, uh, Vita 65 open VPX configurations and profiles available for boards and um, chassis and so forth, uh, it was very hard for vendors to say this is the right one, this is the right one, that's the right one, because they tended to be spread out across all of those, driven by, you know, perhaps in some cases vendors who who were strongly uh, promoting one particular configuration over another vendor that might not be. So now, the in the SOSA uh, a technical standard that is not yet approved, it's it's upcoming. Um, there will be only a handful of say 3U VPX boards and, and 6U VPX boards that will be within that standard. Yes, they will have different options, which each of which will be individually itemized and listed. Uh, so the, uh, the subset of the Vita 65 open VPX is a much, much smaller part adopted by SOSA so that it'll be more focused and more uh, consistent across platforms to have the same types of boards with the same profiles uh, and, and thereby more or less standardize on what, what those preferred boards and profiles will be. Okay. Well, Roger, within the defense community, um, can you think of um, any specific examples of where uh, SOSA technology is really taking hold where it's going to be most beneficial and where do you think we're going to be some, seeing some of the first SOSA design in case studies? Yeah, there's, there's a good example. Imagine that you have an airborne radar system and it's been designed according to the, the upcoming SOSA uh, technical standard. What will happen when a new threat emerges that that aircraft has to become capable of, of uh, tolerating, uh, even, uh, even acting perhaps as a countermeasure 
or to gain and in, uh, gather information from a new type of, of radar system that might be uh, more robust than the previous one, uh, harder to defeat. With the standardization that SOSA delivers, you will be able to perhaps replace one plugin module with another one of the same type in terms of its profile, that is its, its uh, uh, SOSA definition, but with different and new capabilities that have been added inside the SOSA module. And this gets to why the SOSA concept uses, uh, co uses what's called the gray box concept, which means a SOSA module defines its inputs and output connections extremely well, but it does not specify exactly what's inside the box. What's, what is definition of exactly what it does, how it connects, but not necessarily how it's done inside. So you could replace an older uh, module with a new module, a new plug-in card, and have that radar system on that aircraft upgraded to have new capabilities and to be able to uh, withstand new uh, radar countermeasures or attacks or, or become more uh, agile in avoiding perhaps some, some kind of a uh, attack on that aircraft. So, so it's that kind of very quick and very efficient replacement of older technology with newer technology and the ability to reuse the rest of the platform that's there without having to replace the whole platform just because you need to have a new capability um, on that particular aircraft. So it's gonna be less expensive. It's gonna have a lot uh, shorter turnaround time to get that new capability implemented. And it's gonna keep our warfighting team uh, much more current more easily than uh, we've been able to do so before. Okay. Well, are there any examples yet of real products being used that show uh, that show SOSA interoperability and alignment to the standard? Yes, we have a lot of vendors. There, there are probably hundreds of products now that are uh, out there as SOSA aligned products. Uh, last year, uh, in January of 2020, we had an interoperability event down in Atlanta. I know you were there, John. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was extremely well attended and generated a lot of interest. Um, but working and kind of demonstrating the concept of SOSA is trying to promote. So these products that have been coming out uh, in the more than one year since that event uh, are now going to be candidates for certification once the technical standard is released. And there will hopefully be a rather short path towards gaining that certification, a true open uh, vendor community. Okay. So uh, do you think SOS is here to stay? And if it is, what's next? Every sign is that it is. Uh, we are, uh, we're seeing such overwhelming support from the US DOD. They really want this to happen. And when they want something to happen, there's money behind it. There's contracts and procurement behind it. And that's what, it's t what it takes, of course, to uh, interest in the vendor community to be able to supply those products. So it, it, will, it will definitely happen. Uh, it's got good legs. And as I said before, it's off to a good start. Okay, terrific. Well, that's all the time we have right now. So thank you, Roger, for your time today. Uh, just as a reminder to our audience, uh, today's session will be available here within the Military and Aerospace Electronics Tech Summit platform for the next 30 days. So on behalf of Military and Aerospace Electronics Tech Summit and Pentech, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.